what's going on everyone you're welcome once again to david data channel i'm really excited to have you here on today's video we're going to be continuing our series of the a to z of dbt and today we're going to be looking at ci workflow in dbt ci cd workflow in dbt cloud and we're also going to be explaining or trying to understand the dbt state selector because of course your state selector is used in dbt's ci cd workflow if this is your first time we're returning viewer thanks so much for stopping by i'm really excited to have you here on this channel please don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button and please the notification bell so you can notify once a video drops in please do hit the subscribe button right now it really helps the algorithm right thanks so much okay if you've not seen the previous video in this series you can check that in the link above or in the link in the description below as well you can find the link to the previous videos we've had in the a to z of dbt also the dbt playlist as well i'm sure you'll find one or two things that are really beneficial to you in your data and dbt journey all right so let's go into cicd in dbt all right so what is continuous integration and why is it important in data on your dbt workflow so one of the um benefits of using dbt in your data workflow is that dbt tries to apply software engineering best practices into your data workflow it helps you treat your data as code uh, and one of the software engineering best practices amongst others that has been implemented in the dbt ecosystem is continuous integration right so what is continuous integration continuous integration is the practice of integrating your code changes into the main branch of a shared code repository early and often so imagine you work with a team of data professional data analysts or analysis engineers you all have your branches of a shared um source code to the main branch you all make changes to different codes that will impact your data workflow it could impact your dashboards or machine learning um deployments whatever be the case right and then you make changes to a particular model how do we ensure that your code you made changes you made to your model does not break the um code already in production that process of testing that your commits that you made in your own repo or, or rather in your own branch before it is merged to the master branch or the main branch meets the requirements of production branch that whole process of automating that whole testing ensuring that whatever changes whatever changes of co or commits you've made would not break anything in production that whole practice or process is what is referred to as continuous integration and dbt has added this into their cloud platform to help you ensure that any change that goes from um your staging environment or your development environment before it goes into production or deployment environment it meets all the requirements one of the benefits is that it provides assurance that your code changes would work as expected in production have you had a scenario where you made some changes you pushed your changes to production and your pipeline is broken now ci cd or continuous integration helps you ensure gives you an assurance after your ci checks are done that your code before it goes into production it meets the requirements of production another benefit is that it helps to reduce the time it takes to move code from commits to production because it automates that process you don't have to manually try to check that the code does not um, does, does not break anything you don't have to manually run tests your ci checks already has automated that process and so you can quickly move changes from commits into production so your end users can benefit from those changes you've made another benefit is that it also helps organizations or data team to make changes in a standardized and governed ways that does not allow them to sacrifice quality for speed in other words you can also get quality and you can also get speed while you're building your models and putting changes in your models in a quality way you can also get those things shipped into production in a standardized and governed ways that is quick and efficient all right so how do you create a ci job in dbt and what does that really look like so this will also help us explain the other kinds of jobs in dbt and also talk about the state selection in dbt all right so if you come to your create job on your dbt deploy jobs right if you come to your jobs and then you click on create job you would find that is a deploy job your normal dbt run jobs that runs on a schedule or after another job now you have your ci your continuous integration job which is what we're talking about in today's video which runs on pull requests from git and you also have your merge job that runs on merge to branch from git 
so we're going to create a ci job so let's call this job is ci job and the environment this will be this will be on a deployment environment for git trigger we want this to be triggered on a pull request now what happens is that when a pull request happens the default schema is overriding as a temporary schema prefix as dbt cloud underscore pr so if we go to dbt docs like you see this image really what happens is that you have your master branch and you have your feature branches feature a feature b feature c and then you make a pull request at this point for each of these feature branches so um the schema is overriding with the temporary schema like we just saw dbt cloud that's called pr and then dbt runs this your pr code changes only on the code changes and downstream models right um on this temporary schema so that we can be sure that your code changes would not break anything in production and it runs as expected in production all right so we go back there we say one we say one, one to be triggered and then ci job also has a linting feature right and then the command that will be running is zbt build select states modified um you can add other commands as well as many commands as you want say for example if you wanted to have if you had a seed or a snapshot however as we talked about in the, and what we talked about in our previous video on build if you're using dbt build dbt build builds your seeds um your updates your snapshot builds your models and also performs tests as well so whatever be the case say a test or a snapshot or a seed the build would suffice in that case and then what about the states what do we mean by states modified here in our previous um, video we talked about um artifacts right so um, one of the artifacts dbt uses is your manifest or json so dbt um compares the changes you have made here and then compares it to your manifest or json in your deployment environment that's why you have compare changes against an environment the deferred environment the deferred environment and in this case this environment is our deployment environment so dbt has um the manifest of json in this your changed um modified um dbt run and then compares it to the last successful run in your deployment environment and that's what it's that is the only model it runs in this command right models that have has a state modified and is able to identify the state modification from the manifest.json file dbt cloud does all this behind the hood if you're using dbt core you would have to manually um you would have to manually add the path where your um, manifest.json file is attached in your dbt command so that dbt can identify where to pick the manifest from to make that comparison against and so let's even check the advanced setting we don't really we don't really need anything here um everything is as is and then we save and create our ci job if we go back to our development environment on our client on our cloud id and so let's say let's make a simple change so this is a very simple model um so let's um come into one of these our models let's say independent expenditure We'll just take out some space we won't do anything major here so let's let's say we're taking out these spaces uh let me see committee name as committee name something like this just just making a very lousy simple change right okay and then let's commit and sync so let's call this commit ci change ci job change test All right, so we make our commit and then we'll just create our pull request. Remember, the job is triggered on a pull request. All right, um, I took this out previously, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so let's go on. So let's create, you could add your descriptions based on your organization's PR um, templates, right? So, but this is a test, so I'm just going to create a pull request. And voila. This is the this is the default dbt the default git um checks that checks there's no, there are no conflicts with um existing changes or other branches right so now this is our job that's been triggered you can see dbt cloud run pending so if you click on these details it will take us to that job we had 
you can see the job is running yeah so let's refresh this yeah run successful so you see it only ran one model independent expenditure so you have thousands of models hundreds of models you just made a tiny change that affected just few models why do you have to run your whole models to be sure the whole project to be sure that your change is working your ci job ensures that your change is working as expected and it wouldn't break anything in production and also if there are downstream models that depends on this model you made the change those models are also going to be run as well okay yes so really if we go back to our um github if we go back to our pull request we would see that all checks has been passed now what are some benefits to this to using your ci job or some differences between your ci job and other deployment jobs we see that um it has concurrent concurrent ci checks what that means is that if you have like five developers working on a particular project and we all created pull requests almost at the same time or at different times those ci checks would all run concurrently it does not matter how they could run in parallel and also there is smart cancellation of stale builds now this is a build that was successful right in our job this is a build this is a build that was successful in our ci job this build was successful but this build is now stale right so what this means is that if i make a new commit so let me come to my let me go back to dbt cloud make a new commit you would see it's going to override that existing that steel build so let me take out this space and take out this piece and just bring this down just a very simple commit just to be some changes and um i'm going to call this commit updated just So when we make that commit, it's going to override that. You can see the commit has been made. DBT is running its job again on the pull request. You can see this now. You can see this now. The job is running again. So it overrides still steel builds. As you can see, the build is going all over again. And run slot um, treatment. CI runs don't consume a run slot. And then when you execute your SQL linting, your, your SQL files are... Your SQL lint test is performed as expected. Yeah. So really, this is how your DBT CI job works. Um, it helps you to ensure that the changes that comes into production are as expected. There's confidence in your project at all points in time. All right. So um, that's that on this video on your CI continuous integration and um, continuous um, deployment workflow in dbt cloud um, ensure you implement this in your project and then please feel free to let me know about your thoughts your questions your experience in using your continuous integration workflow in dbt core dbt cloud i'd love to hear from you as well all right so thanks so much for watching i hope you got a thing or two out of this video don't forget to hit the like button the subscribe button or the notification bell so you can be notified once a new video drops in as well all right. Thanks so much, everyone. See you in the next video. Bye.